Welcome back to the channel everybody. This is Clayton and it's been a while since I've made any new uploads to the channel, at least over a month. But in that amount of time I've been doing some important things for the channel and I've also had some personal things come up with me that I want to elaborate on before I get into the speaking points of this video and I just want to get those out of the way so that I can get on to uh, the subjects of the video tonight. So one of the things that I brought up in my previous video to the channel was that several weeks back I had a root canal procedure done on one of my teeth and I wanted to inform you guys that uh, it went over incredibly smoothly um, there was no like discomfort or anything it was a lot uh, less worse than when I had my wisdom teeth worked on and the procedure went over uh, probably about as good as you could want it to um, I didn't need any anesthesia there was numbing agent of course applied to my tooth and I made a, a speedy recovery from uh, that procedure and it really hasn't affected the way that I speak or anything and like I said I'm in no discomfort and uh, that was something that I want to get out of the way and bring up for uh, this video some other things that had gone on was that there was some big media related news regarding the film industry and uh, some media related uh, topics other than filmmaking uh, for instance, the other day I'd heard that the film Deadpool and Wolverine had surpassed over a billion dollars at the box office. Uh, that was really significant since recently I'd heard on the news that the film had surpassed uh, $211 million and it's uh, more than made back its budget. And uh, there's also the movie Twisters which did really well at the box office. Uh, I believe earning well over $400 million which is another success for um, I think universal, but I, I could be wrong. Um, I'm not entirely sure uh, at this moment who owns uh, the rights to Twister. I think it's universal. But uh, that was something that had gone on that I think was really important. There was also some news regarding uh, like the actual business side of the film industry. Uh, more importantly, uh, Paramount Pictures is apparently cutting 15% of their workforce which is a really big detriment for uh, people working in Hollywood, uh, talented people, cameramen, uh, lighting technicians, visual effects designers, uh, you know, things like that. And uh, that was some really big news. And uh, there was also some other news that had gone on in addition to that. So in addition to the recent news of Paramount Pictures cutting 15% of their workforce, there was also a lot of news coming out of the film industry that a lot of creatives are leaving the industry for a myriad of reasons in seeking work elsewhere which has probably about the same amount of pros and cons that you would expect for that type of industry shift and uh, you could say that this video in particular is almost a, a follow-up to a video I done a year ago talking about the writer's strike and the debacle with artificial intelligence affecting the film industry in Hollywood of course, I'm a lot less optimistic in regards to the subject I brought up last time, which was something I had coined uh, the new media renaissance, where independent content creators and filmmakers can use artificial intelligence tools and uh, this new media uh, industry in order to collaborate and make new film and art. And uh, that was something that I was really optimistic about in the summer of 2023. And uh, now that we're leaving the summer of 2024, I am very, uh, I'm a lot less optimistic towards uh, that idea than I was last year. Because there's been a whole uh, industry wide shift in regards to uh, like work in Hollywood and uh, just, uh, I guess, labor practices and uh, like media mergers, you know, like these big media conglomerates like sort of fusing together and, uh, they get bought out by each other and I think it's really affecting some people and uh, it just I hear more and more about it each day so going into the subjects of the video that I wanted to speak about uh, there were some things that I would watched recently that kind of helped me uh, reflect on the current situation in the film industry and the discourse surrounding uh, a lot of people leaving and just like industry-wide changes that I think are affecting people and when looking back on older Hollywood film productions, it starts to make itself more relevant. Uh, so the most recent film that I watched was, I believe, the 1994 film The Firm, uh, which is a Tom Cruise film directed by Sidney Pollack. But that was uh, that actually wasn't one of the films that I wanted to speak about. 
there was three others I'd watched beforehand that I think would be a lot more poignant towards uh, the subject of the video that I'm uh, referring to. So these films were The Mask of Zorro from 1998, directed by uh, Martin Campbell, um, Robocop 2 from 1990, directed by Irving Kirshner, and uh, the film Armageddon, directed by Michael Bay in 1998. I feel that these three films that I watched recently really do shed some light on how Hollywood used to be compared to what it is nowadays where we have a lot more disposable uh, I guess art projects coming out if you could even call them that uh, you know projects like uh, Star Wars The Acolyte or the new Borderlands movie that had just recently uh, came out that uh, opened at a zero percent on Rotten Tomatoes but uh, back in the past with these older films you know these films had a lot more respect for uh, production value, uh, technical aspects, uh, a lot of stunts that were done in camera, a lot of effects that were done in-house in like a production warehouse with uh, employees that were specialized in doing those kinds of effects. And nowadays it seems like CGI is becoming a lot more commonplace. But even then, artificial intelligence appears to be uh, at least maybe outsourcing CGI maybe sometime this decade. Of course, I really don't know. Um, it certainly seems like through, you know, um, programs like Sora AI and Luma AI that are becoming more advanced in procedurally generating uh, just artwork and scenes for uh, particular projects. I think that that's something that a lot of people need to be looking into, especially now that there's companies working on artificial intelligence cinema cameras that uh, come with uh, artificial intelligence overlays uh, loaded onto chips that can be uh, overlaid onto video footage or film footage and superimposed and it can create some uh, really interesting effects. Ultimately, of course, the question really comes down to how does the footage look? And well, you know, actually not too bad. I mean, it really does have that kind of like stable diffusion video to video look uh you know there's a lot of inconsistencies and morphing happening with the characters in the foreground i actually think the backgrounds look really cool and stylized even though for you know stable diffusion it doesn't really appear all that stable because a lot of the same problems with cgi are happening with artificial intelligence uh there's objects that clip between each other uh, there's objects that kind of generate out of nowhere. There's artifacts. There's all sorts of issues that come with computer-generated imagery. And I feel like artificial intelligence has to have checks and balances just like that in order for it to be a lot more uniform for film work. So continuing on with what I had said about artificial intelligence, I feel that currently right now in 2024, I think that artificial intelligence is uh, very advanced but it still has a lot of issues that need to be worked out before it can be used in like a professional like film setting. I know that there are certain instances of artificial intelligence used in film productions, uh, namely deep fake technology for digitally de-aging actors, as well as voice synthesis for actors that have maybe lost their voice. I know that there were actually two examples of this used in the uh, Hollywood film industry. Um, I believe it was in, um, it might have been in the Obi-Wan Kenobi series on Disney Plus. Uh, James Earl Jones had given the rights to Disney to do an AI reconstruction of his voice since he wasn't able to do the voice of Darth Vader like he used to. And there was also an instance of the actor Val Kilmer who had been recovering from throat cancer. He had to, uh, uh, there, there was a production for a film that he had worked on where they had to digitally reconstruct his voice using artificial intelligence. And those were two practical uses of the technology. Uh, there, another instance was, of course, uh, digitally de-aging Mark Hamill for The Mandalorian on Disney+. Plus. That was another example. So, yeah, I think that artificial intelligence does have its uses in the film industry. But at the same time, there are a lot of pros and cons that come with using it. Like I said, a lot of people have been laid off from Hollywood. Lots of people that were working in the industry who are going to be looking for new job opportunities uh, outside of uh, like California in the film industry, uh, which there are some advantages to that 
such as a lot of uh, like production companies outsourcing to uh, local counties and states that ha offer uh, film tax incentives, which was something else that I'd spoke about on my channel. And uh, these productions can, uh, of course, uh, reap the rewards of using these film tax incentives and not only save a bunch of money, but also provide a commerce for the state that they might be filming in, which is actually uh, something that is really beneficial for a lot of states that would otherwise never get film commerce. Uh, for instance, there was a story I'd heard recently uh, regarding the Midwest getting a, a huge new uh, bump from, uh, you know, a, a really big uh, news story that it broke about uh, the Sundance Film Festival. So I had heard on the news recently that Kentucky Governor Andy Bashir is working out a deal with the Sundance Film Festival, which is wanting to move from Utah to Louisville, Kentucky which would uh, provide uh, a whole bunch of new film commerce to the Kentucky area and the larger Midwest and would provide film commerce for neighboring states. Organizers behind the Sundance Film Festival are getting a first-hand look at everything Louisville has to offer as they look for a new home. Governor Randy Bashir and Mayor Craig Greenberg shared these photos on social media of the big visit yesterday. It included a stop at Churchill Downs you see right here. Sundance has been held in Park City, Utah for the last 40 years, but they're looking for a new host starting in 2027. Louisville was named alongside Atlanta, Boulder, and Cincinnati as finalists. Uh, in addition to uh, like Georgia and all these other states that offer really big uh, film tax incentives that I think a lot of uh, productions could uh, you know benefit from and uh, that's one of the uh, good things to come out of this whole industry-wide shift. So getting into my concluding thoughts of this video uh, since my camcorder keeps dying on me um, I wanted to uh, of course wrap things up by saying uh, you know some last minute things in regards to the subjects that I've spoken about uh, personally for me uh, like I, I think I've said before I feel that the uh, future of Hollywood will be outside of the Hollywood industry in uh, California and it will more and it will move elsewhere uh, out further out into the United States and around the world uh, where uh, independent film venues and film festivals and uh, just uh, just like art installation films and museums and uh, films on YouTube made by independent content creators I feel that these are going to be the future of uh, the Hollywood film industry as we know it uh, even now as we speak the animation industry uh, from what I've heard is also going through this same shift where a lot of uh, animation is probably going to be outsourced to a lot of places outside of Hollywood uh, namely, uh, I believe uh, Canada was one of the places that I had heard where um, the animation industry is thriving. Um, but yeah, these are a few of the things that I think are going to be impacted by this industry-wide shift of technology and just work opportunities and just all these other things that I think make up uh, the film industry. And, uh, you know, uh, like I said, there's it, it, there's local impacts to this also because of uh, neighboring like film commerce and just uh, you know new venues available in, in like film and of course you know there's also like uh, smaller like uh, localized things like movie theaters which a lot of people uh, don't really go to the theaters anymore unless there's like some big event movie coming out like a new Marvel film or like Oppenheimer which is like a really big deal because it's a Christopher Nolan film uh, you know big prestige films like that that are obviously going to uh, get people's attention and also win plenty of awards uh, during awards season I think that those are, are really uh, impactful for uh, you know the future of the industry and um, uh, th these were some of my concluding thoughts to the state of the way things are right now. Um, I think there's a lot of things that still need to be improved upon. Um, uh, like I said, there's new opportunities springing up all the time, uh, regardless if people think that there aren't any because there actually are. You just have to, you know, uh, seek these things out. You have to uh, look into these things and see where these new opportunities spring up. 
uh, for the industry because they're a lot closer to home than you probably think. And um, I think it's uh, important to reiterate that because a lot of people uh, just don't see it that way when it's actually the case. Um, I've been pretty busy for the past month now. Uh, like I said in my previous video, there's a film festival submission that I'm planning on making at some point. Uh, hopefully everything goes uh, according to plan. Uh, the film festival, I think, is coming up in the fall. But uh, the worst case scenario is that the festival is withheld a couple of months until the spring of 2025. Which, I mean, personally, it would be a bit of a, a downer for me uh, if my film had... Uh, you know, been stuck on a hard drive for a couple of months before somebody could see it. But I can perfectly understand if there's like a committee or somebody or like judges that have to uh, evaluate everybody's films that they submit. So yeah, a film festival submission is definitely something that I plan on doing sometime before 2025. And that's something I'll be working on uh, for a majority of 2024. In addition to making new videos for the channel, and uh, that was one of the things that I wanted to uh, speak about in regards to the future of this channel. Because I know I've been gone for a while, and um, I'm sure there's a lot of people that have been wondering where I've been at. And um, I've been working on things. I've been figuring things out, and uh, I've been trying to come up with new projects. Uh, I've been looking into media-related subjects that would be interesting for the channel uh, that might drive up viewership, because I've noticed in my analytics that my viewership has gone down but my subscriber count is still going up which is great but um, I, I need to start making videos again and uh, these are just some of the things I needed to do you know uh, coming back uh, to YouTube and like I said before uh, be sure to like comment and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video